What's going on guys, Bilal Saeed here, welcome back to another YouTube video and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you guys exactly what I use for my vlogs. Now if you have been following my YouTube you know that I do a lot of vlogs and I pretty much vlog every country that I visit and some people have obviously asked me what is my vlog camera, what lens do I use, what mic do I use and my general setup. So today I'm going to answer all those questions, I'm also going to give you a breakdown of each product and what it does and why I use it and then its cost as well and how that constructs my vlog setup. But before we do get into the video, you guys know what to do if you are new to the channel hit that subscribe button you can share there's a few things you could do actually but you know that subscribe button if it's red me and you we've got problems so without further ado let's get started into this video now the first thing i'm going to address is obviously the main body which is the camera now i use the canon eos r6 I've got the R here because I do use this sometimes when my R6 is obviously recording this YouTube video. But it looks something similar to this. It's the new R series cameras that Canon are releasing. They are the full frame mirrorless ones and they do an amazing job with the tracking and the autofocus, especially the R6. Now the reason I like the Canon R6 is because it shoots 4K full frame so it doesn't crop in. So I'm able to use the full capacity of the camera and shoot 4K to deliver high quality videos to yourselves. And that's the key for me, it's you know, what camera could I have got that would both match my client needs, which is 4K, 4K60 sometimes, and shoot vlogs at a high quality as well without it being too heavy, without having to rely on something else. So I thought I'd incorporate both aspects, the client aspect of photography and videography that I do, but also the fun element, which is the vlogs, the traveling, and the, the voluntary things that I do. And this camera sort of had everything that it needed. Again, the 4K capability was definitely something that allured me towards buying this camera but also the fact that it's mirrorless uh, amongst many many other reasons that obviously fall outside of vlog. Now the Canon EOS R6 camera body does start on the Canon website at £2,149.99 uh, UK. So it is quite a pricey camera but again it is purely down to the fact that I use it for commercial and business clients essentially and obviously YouTube as well so I needed to invest in a camera that could tick all those boxes. So that's the camera out of the way. The next thing that we want to address is the lens now within my youtube since i started my youtube i've used two lenses so i'll start with the lens that i started with um, and then i'll go on to the lens that i mainly use so it's the canon rf 24 to 70 millimeter uh, 2.8 aperture lens the reason i used this lens for vlog was because it had 24 millimeter uh, focal length which for me was wide enough for vlog the good thing about this lens is it gave me the ability to zoom in and zoom out whilst vlogging so for example if i wanted to get an expression on ibi's face i could zoom in and i could get it and it would just give me that versatility when vlogging the downside to this lens i've mentioned that the good thing is that you can zoom in you can zoom out versatility perfect the negative aspect of this lens is it's extremely heavy, especially when you mount it on the body. It is very, very heavy. You're holding it with one hand, you're putting it up and you're vlogging and you're talking to the camera with the mic on top. It's very, very heavy. And it does sometimes strain your arm a little bit. And so this gave me a bit of a dilemma. I love the lens, I love the versatility of the lens, but I don't wanna be holding a camera that's heavy. And this put me off vlogging. So I didn't wanna to have to worry about that. So I thought, is there a, a smaller lens that I could use? And that's when I came across the 16 millimeter 2.8 RF lens. Now this lens does come in at 2,389 pounds and 99 pence, essentially 2.4K, which is a lot of money. This is actually more than the camera itself. I really like this lens, by the way. For photography, the compression it has. Aside from vlogs, that's the best lens I could buy on. It does cost a lot of money. However, it's definitely worth the investment if you are looking for versatility in both photography and videography. This lens is like, goated it's 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 too good now moving on to the lens that i do actually use quite regularly in every vlog pretty much is the 16 millimeter rf 2.8 you can see the size difference and believe it or not the price mirrors the size difference this lens comes in at 289 pounds and 99 pence significantly cheaper but also significantly lighter i can literally throw this about and it's, it's portable i can carry it in my pocket it's an amazing, amazing lens as far as size and portability is concerned. I think portability is the right word. And the width that this lens gives. I'll just give you guys an example of the width that you can achieve with this camera. As you guys can see, it's very, very wide. I don't have to worry about extending my arm so much so that you get my full face when it, when it comes to vlogging. I just need to simply just put it at a sensible distance and it captures everything, not just me, but the people in the vlog as well. And I really like this lens for that and only for that. So I wanna make it very clear, I like this lens, but only for vlogs because for everything else, <laughs> It doesn't cut it. It's too wide for, for in most cases when it comes to shooting forward. So not my face. It's too too wide. This is only good for when the camera is facing you as a vlog cap, as a vlog lens. The benefit of this lens is obviously it's significantly lighter. 
significantly wider, which is perfect for vlog. However, I can't zoom in and zoom out. So if I ever want to zoom into someone, I have to literally go close to it. But even then, it won't be the same as a compressed 24, 35, 50, or even 70. So with this lens, it is a little bit tricky in that sense, where I can, I'm very, I'm limited basically to one focal length. And that's the downside. And that's what I don't like. And that's why I still take this with me when I'm going on holiday. But that's the only downside. And it's annoying switching lenses. That's the thing I hate the most. This is perfect, I really like it. But again, just for vlogs. For everything else, it's not amazing. Another downside to this, this, which can be fixed obviously, is the sort of warping on the sides. You'll see in this video in particular that the sides warp a little bit. Now, this can't really be fixed in terms of post. I mean, you can image stabilize it, but that takes so long. So unfortunately, it's not the best when it comes to image stabilized lenses. But then again, I can't complain with the price point, like it's a cheap lens, what do I expect? However, I will explain what I do, and I will go into more depth on that on another video where I'll cover just 16 millimeter lens. But this can be fixed sort of, sort of, not amazingly, but it can sort of be fixed with the inbuilt image stabilization. So the Canon R6 has two stops of image stabilization. And to be fair, the first stop does it all right, and it doesn't warp as much, but you can see it's a little bit more cropped in, which I don't mind because the 16 millimeter is wide enough. So even if it does crop in, it's okay. It's shot 4K, the quality is con is sustained, is that the word? Quality is sustained. The quality is sustained, if that makes sense. So that's a quick fix, but it's not the best fix. And obviously this lens doesn't have that issue because it's, it's a much better lens, obviously. But for the vlog lens, the 16 millimeter RF is the go-to. Moving on to the microphone, Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. Now this is an on-camera shotgun microphone. So you literally attach it to your camera and you sort of direct at your face and it will pick up the audio and it's really really good it's actually really really clear considering that i've used it in the wind without a dead cat i've used it in public places where there's loads of people talking it does actually pick up my voice really really well this uh you can buy from amazon um i'm not sure how much i got it for it was on sale but it does retail at 279 pounds currently 270 pounds for some reason on amazon but it's a very, very good mic. Um, it picks up very, very good. You have different settings here as well. And what I love about this mic is obviously you can choose the frequencies and the decibels. But what I particularly love, and this is like, this is the reason I bought this microphone, is once connected to your mount, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> this thing here once connected to that and obviously you attach the wires into the camera the mic only turns on when your camera turns on so if my camera is off it turns off automatically so now i don't have to worry about turning it off which sometimes i would forget with my old mic so it will just turn on and off with the camera and that's good because it conserves battery life and it's just convenient i don't have to worry about it too much and in terms of the battery life it lasts a very long time i don't know what the spec for the battery life is for this but I don't think I need to know, like it's amazing, it lasts a very long time, like I was in Lebanon, Kenya for two weeks, I was vlogging every day and I didn't need to charge it, so just to give you a perspective of how long it lasts, I've not charged it since actually. But yeah guys, that's the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, I highly highly recommend. Um, although it's a little bit of a pricier mic for on camera shotgun, it's definitely worth the investment if you are looking for premium audio. So I'm going to give you an example of how this sounds on a, on a normal vlog and you guys will understand exactly what I mean when it comes to the audio quality. So I'm going to show you guys a video of myself in Spain using the camera, using the 16mm, using the R6 and using the mic and you'll be able to see exactly what sort of vlog you can expect, what type of audio quality ex you can expect. So in about 5 seconds we're going to be in Spain, alright? Ready? Let's go. Guys, what a walk. Like genuinely, man. It's very... And that's how I know like, I'm not fit. So as you guys can see, the audio is very, very crispy clear, despite the fact that we are outside in the outdoors, public area, wind blowing, people talking. You can see the quality is retained. And that is why I bought the mic, because it's, it's good, you know? And sometimes you have to invest that kind of money to get quality you have to invest to stand out and you know if you've, if you've got the opportunity to and you do take this career seriously why not now the last thing that forms part of my vlog setup is obviously the tripod now i use a manfrotto i don't know what it's called but it's a small sort of tripod we just put the camera on you put the mic on whatever on the lens on and it's very good it's very light you can just go like that what's up guys how you doing and you're good to go so if you want to put it put it on like a table and talk to it at the same time and this does come in at around 20 pounds 20 30 pounds i don't know how much i, I, don't, I can't remember but you can get it off amazon but yeah guys this is the manfrotto black tripod and i don't know if you guys have noticed but everything in my setup is black everything and that's because i don't know if you guys can tell but i love black black's my favorite color so what i'm going to do for you guys is i'm going to mount my vlog setup so we're going to start with the tripod then with the camera We'll put the 16 millimeter on. 
and then we're going to mount it onto the tripod like that then we're going to put the mic on top i've not got the cable so we're just going to pretend for now and that is a setup as you guys can see very portable don't need to do much it's there it's cool it's light as well compared to that lens but yeah guys that's the vlog setup so that is what I use guys, I will be linking everything in the description below with the link to everything on the Canon website or the Amazon website depending on where you can get it from. Now this vlog setup isn't exactly the cheapest, I'm well aware of that. So if you guys are looking for a budget friendly vlog setup, I can sort of make a video for that if you guys want. Just let me know in the comment section below if you would like that and I'll be more than happy to make a video on that. One thing I will say is you don't need this level of equipment. It's not necessary, it's not required. I have friends that vlog on their iPhones and they have way more subscribers than I do, way more engagement. And their video quality is amazing because iPhones and smartphones in general are sort of advancing. And so like, don't feel like you need this to be a good vlogger. Ultimately, it's how you are on camera, your personality and your content really that's gonna make you a better vlogger. It's not your equipment really. That's just aesthetically pleasing to the eye. And as photographers and videographers, we notice these things, so that's why we invest. So if you are someone that's looking to start out on the vlogging scene, you don't need any fancy equipment. Honest, your phone is your phone will do the job. Um, like I said, I know many, many people who use their phones to vlog, shot on 4K with the back camera and they're good to go. So that's the video guys, I hope you enjoyed. And yeah guys, if you did enjoy the video, do leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new to the channel. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next video.